with Pastor Femi. That's right. And we are here to discuss some serious issues that are going on in our church, um, especially in the realm of deliverance. Mm -hmm. And we understand that many pastors and believers um, are kind of in the dark um, with this issue. I just want to sit here and and to ask you some questions, being that you are anointed in the area of deliverance. So I wanted to actually first off, what is deliverance? Well, um, can I say something? Yes. You mentioned that you know issues that, that are going on in your church. It, it sounded for those who are watching us right now, we're really referring to the body of Christ. Yes. So not just yes. your particular church, but the, yes. the church at large. No, yes, the, the body of Christ. That's right. <laughs> yes. All right, deliverance really is the process of casting out devil evil spirits, to make it very simple. That's deliverance. However, it's more than that. It's breaking yokes, breaking bondages, removing roadblocks that are in people's lives. It's confronting the strong man that is, that is assigned against people's lives, people's destinies, that is working to stop people from fulfilling their purpose in life. Deliverance is breaking strongholds that are in people's lives. So, all of that, to sum all of that, that's the difference, I think. Wow, wow. Why isn't it dealt with in the African-American church? Wow. Uh, several reasons. One, ignorance. So there are people who are totally ignorant when it comes to deliverance and spiritual warfare. You know, it's kind of funny how some churches, they actually have deliverance in the name of the church. Yes. But they actually don't know what deliverance is. Wow. They know it on the surface level. They know what deliverance is on the surface level, but not in the real sense of it. Uh, so ignorance is one. Another reason is some, some pastors are actually afraid. <laughs> Believe it or not, there are pastors who are afraid anything with the devil, anything with Satan, evil spirit, they are literally afraid. So there are people like that. There are pastors that they're really not living the life that they need to be living. So they know that they better not go near no demon and try to you know help people in that aspect because they know that their own life is not right. Right. Um, right. Then there are pastors that actually, believe it or not, they themselves are dabbling into witchcraft. Yes. So because they are kind of like with the devil, although they are preaching on the pulpit. Let me quickly tell you something. I was teaching yes. a, uh, a class on deliverance at a Bible college and there was this man there who pastors a church of about 80 members. And he's a member of the Lord. And uh, his wife asked some African people to come and you know, kill and sacrifice chicken in their bathtub. And they are the pastors of a congregation. Wow, wow. So it's like it was in the Bible college in that class that we began to address this thing. And I had to really be trying to lead this pastor to salvation. So when you have some pastors that are like that, they themselves are dabbling into witchcraft, how can they talk about it? Wow. So it's a lot. Wow. What are some of the issues people face that most churches do not address? Well, it's many of them. Um, of course, everything I'm sharing with you, I'm just giving you ideas because yes. we're really going to get into it. It's yes. going to be a lot. I know, I know. Um, there is the issue of ancestral curses, generational curses. Usually, things inherited from the family line. Things in the family line. And sometimes, you know, churches may talk about it on the surface, but they really don't understand it. And so people are going through those issues, like grandma was divorced, mama was divorced, and here you are now. You are also about to be divorced. And you don't understand that this is a trend in your family. That is a generational curse that needs to be broken. Or it could be, you know, grandparents or, or ancestors that were involved with certain things. Maybe even worship the devil, you know, and stuff. And in the process, a curse has been released against that family. I'll give you an example how that can be. Granny was sick. They took gran granny somewhere. 
And the root worker said, no problem, we can fix granny. We can make sure granny don't die. However, you're going to have to hand over your prosperity, the prosperity of your family. So granny who wants to be well just goes ahead and sign up for that. So now the prosperity of the family, of that particular family, has been handed over to Satan. And so everybody in that family will struggle financially. It does not matter whether they go to the best schools in the world. It does not matter whether they have the best skills, the best potentials. Because the prosperity has been handed over, they will suffer. Then think about it. Three generations later, four generations later, somebody got saved. And they never canceled those agreements. They just assumed that once you are saved, everything is canceled, which is not true. There are some things you must specifically address, specifically cancel, so that people can be free. So the issue of generational curses and central curses, that's just one. Uh, then there's household enemy. Uh, of course, it's written in the Bible, but sometimes what I see is people can talk to you theoretically about stuff, but they don't know how to really apply it to the real world. So they're reading in the Bible, yes, you know, the brothers of Joseph, they were you know, jealous of him, they hated him because one, the father gave him the coat of many colors and then he's talking about his dreams and stuff like that. Well, yeah, we read it in the Bible, but it's applicable here right now. It's happening on the job. It's happening even in the church that you got a position and somebody is not happy with you and jealous of you. And there are churches where people actually will go to the obia worker or root worker or voodoo person to actually stop the other person from progressing, even in the church. Yes, <laughs> very true. So th these are issues. There's the issues of spirit wife, spirit husband. So people who, in their dream, they find themselves sleeping with a man or with a woman in their dream. They wonder what's this, but since the church they go to never mention those things, so they kind of secretly are going through things. There are people who see recurring or reoccurring issues. It could be a sickness that's always a reoccurring. It could be that they're always almost there, always almost getting a blessing, but never really receiving it. And it's just not, I mean, it's just so many of them. And there's the issues of dreams, you know, people having certain attacks, all kinds of weird things going on in their dreams. And I'm not talking prophetic dreams now. I'm talking right. dreams that indicate witchcraft attack and stuff like that so many, many issues that people are going through in the body of Christ. Right. wow these are uh, definitely issues i've heard um people talk about and um they were just general prayers and it was never really dealt with i was looking at one of your interviews where you talk about cleaning the house that's right <laughs> and and sometimes we don't really get into the rooms that need to be clean. can you um, talk on that um a little bit yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, uh, one of the things, I guess one of the things that happen is people will open the door, bring something into their home, and don't realize that those things are actually opening the door to Satan. And unfortunately, even in the homes of some of the Christians, they, they will go and buy some cultural stuff. It looks nice. Wow, this, this is a nice you know, piece of artwork from Africa or from the Caribbean. Um, or from, 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 from Asia somewhere, but they never really ask themselves, where is this from? What does this represent? But anyway, they will bring it home. The next thing you know, the devil all of a sudden has a legal right into that home. Wow. And uh, so there's a need for cleansing. I remember a lady at City College that told me she got some African artwork. And when she brought it home, strange things, like she'll be hearing movement in the house, like all kinds of strange things that are happening. And she's like, what in the world? But then as she thought about it, it dawned on her that it was when she brought those things home that all those strange things started. So she got rid of them and all those things stopped. So there's a need to cleanse the house. But then you mentioned something about general um, versus specific. Yeah. Well, um, most of our churches, I've seen it a lot in the African-American community. Most of the churches really are addressing the surface stuff. Yeah. Most of the prayers are general prayer. And God really gave me this analogy using my own house because 
in my house one time I was going to rent out an apartment. So Section 8, you know, uh, the ones I was dealing with, and they have their requirement. Anyway, so I mopped the floor. It was a hardwood floor. I mopped it, and he got okay. The place look, is looking shiny right now, so let them come in, inspect the place. They did. They failed me. And one of the reasons why they failed me, eventually I fixed the iPad. But one of the reasons why they failed me was that there were gum stains on the floor. So even though I had mopped, and indeed it removed some dirt, but the gum stains actually requires me getting on my knees, taking a knife, and one by one, scraping each one of those things out. True deliverance is the scraping out wow. of those deep-rooted stuff. Deliverance is not the general prayer, Lord, I bind this, I bind that, the general ones people pray. Right. That is really not true deliverance. That's just the surface stuff. So when you pray those prayers, yeah, you'll notice some difference, but you still know that some serious problems still persist. Right. Because right. those are deep-rooted stuff that must be addressed. And most people, unfortunately, even pastors, are not trained to even understand the deep-rooted stuff and how to, you know, get rid of them. So. Wow. This is some heavy information. <laughs> Does all deliverance have manifestation, mm -hmm. or do they have to have a sign of relief? Okay, um, let me say this. When I pray for people for deliverance, I'm not necessarily praying to get a manifestation. I'm just praying to get the demon out. In many cases, there will be manifestations, but not in all cases. Okay. Um, such manifestations as, you know, the demons start screaming. Sometimes they will say, no, I'm not coming out. Sometimes they actually begin to talk to you. I was praying for one lady. She was 33 at that time. She had concluded that she would never be ma married because all her relationship never worked. And so she said, maybe I'm not supposed to be married. But it was his spirit behind that. So when I started praying for her, all of a sudden, the demon began to speak. And the spirit said, why are you praying for her like this? Nobody has ever prayed for her like this. She's been to church. But she goes to church. But the prayer she gets in church is general prayer. The kind of reaction that we saw that day, or the kind of manifestation, took a more specific warfare, you know, rooting out of the issue kind of prayer. And so that demon began to talk and say all kinds of stuff. Anyway, so the spirit revealed to me that he was her own grandmother that actually took a private area. Now, I know it's kind of weird now. This is the spiritually deep stuff right now. So they did something spiritually to a private area, and they literally buried it somewhere in Africa. This lady originally was born there, but she's been here since a baby. So, but yet something was done by grandma that basically tied her up to under a tree. The spirit was telling me this. And indeed, when she described her dreams, her dreams are like weird and all kinds of demons comes to sleep with her and stuff. Because even in that case, those spirits have married her. Okay. So there are people in our churches. Some of them are praise and worship leaders. Some of them are pastors listening to me right now. Some of them are, are, are ministers and workers in, in, in the churches. But yet, Spiritually, they are married to a spirit. Wow. So, again, when pastors don't address this kind of issues, or they don't know to even address this kind of issue, so there are people there who are silently going through something, and they don't know who to talk to because it is so strange that they keep it to themselves. If I say to my pastor, my pastor will say, are you on drugs or... <laughs> yes. What, what's wrong yes. with you? Because right. what you're telling me is so weird right now. Right. But these are real things that people are going through. You see, you have to understand that because of what I do as a person who prays for people for deliverance, people open up to me. Right. So what they will not open up to any other pastor, they will say it to someone like me. Right. Because now I'm 
saying things and now all of a sudden they're not feeling like they're crazy no more right so they can open up and say okay you know what what you talking about even some of you watching me right now you're saying pastor you really talking about what i'm going through right now yes Yes. You know, you've never talked to anybody about it because you didn't think anybody even can understand that. And the devil has made you keep quiet. Yes. But now you're hearing this and you're saying, wow. I remember one lady was interviewing me on radio, radio one time. After we finished the interview, then she said, Pastor, I need deliverance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because everything you just talked about, right. I'm going through that myself. Right. You right. know, so these this, this things are real. So it doesn't always have to be a manifestation per se. Depending on the kind of spirit you're dealing with, depending on what's in there, um, then you know, there may either be some manifestation or may not be a manifestation. But I'm not necessarily looking for a manifestation. I'm prepared for a manifestation. Okay. And sometimes, talking about release, the person who's being prayed for will feel a sense of, yes, I'm free now. Many times people will tell me, I feel light. I feel like something left me. I feel right. a heavy burden is gone. So that's a sign right there that they just received deliverance. Um, for some other people, even you as a minister, you just kind of have a discernment that yes, you know, something that's really happened and they are free. Um, now, many times when you're praying for people, you know they are receiving their deliverance when you know they are vomiting, they are coughing, they are yawning, they are passing gases, they are spitting, they are screaming, you know, all kinds of ways. When demons are leaving a person, all kinds of reactions that, that take place. But sometimes, again, there may be no none of those, but yet the person still know that they've been delivered. Wow, wow. Pastor Femi, you are helping the people tonight. Can you be delivered from everything? Yes. Okay. Why would I say yes? Because Jesus died for us, not just to be saved, to be healed. To be delivered. Yes, you can be delivered from everything. However, deliverance many times takes a process. It's a process many times. The more knowledge you have, the quicker you can be delivered. You can actually be in a church for 40 years and be in bondage for 40 years because you are ignorant. Like, for example, I just mentioned spirit, wife, spirit, husband. Somebody is watching me right now. And they've been going through that. They don't really know what that is. They don't know why something will come and sleep with them every other night. They don't know. But now they're hearing like, wow, so I need deliverance from that. Guess what? Because they just found that, that now. So they're going to be delivered because they can reach out to someone like me or reach out to anybody who can really pray for them. And then they can be delivered. So um, you can be delivered from everything. But information is key. Knowledge is key. Because if you never get knowledge about issues that's happening, then you will never seek deliverance for it. So there are people in churches and the pastors have told them a lie that, hey, you're free. <laughs> am I right. really free? <laughs> right, right. You're free. I am free. I am free. So, <laughs> so they sing their song that I'm free and all that stuff. Let me say this. There's a difference between who we are positionally and who we are practically. Wow. So, Somebody may be looking at me and say, Pastor Femi, but we are free. Well, positionally, I agree with you, we are free. Jesus Christ has paid a price for our freedom. So I can claim my freedom. However, here's the problem. In claiming your freedom, you have to stand upon the freedom Jesus Christ has bought for you. But you still have to now say, I stand on that platform and I begin to command everything, every bondage, every struggle, get out. But you don't just assume that Oh, I'm saved now. I'm free. Go and ask many people. Let them be honest with themselves and honest with you and tell them, uh, tell you their experience. You'll find out, ooh, it's a lot of bondage in many people's lives. Wow, Pastor. People fly from other states and countries to see you for deliverance. Why do they do that when there are so many churches near them? Well, you can have. 20 churches on the same block, like in Brooklyn. You're yes. from Brooklyn, right? <laughs> yes, I am. There are about 700 churches on Fulton Street. Yes. Oh my God, that's yes. a lot. Yes. So you can have so many churches, but when they don't know about these issues, the deep-rooted issues, the real issues, um, 
It doesn't matter that they're so close to you. I've met people who have come to me for prayer and they say, well, I went to this church, went to that pastor, and the pastor says, it's, only, it's just in your, on your mind. It's just on, it's, that, that's just all in your mind. Nah, that's not going on. That's just all in your mind. Now, how can such people help you? So sometimes they have to reach out to someone who's addressing issues that they're going through. And uh, just this week, I got a call from Europe. And um, the lady's setting up something where she could come here uh, for prayer. But why do you need to do that? Now, I'm not going to say that there are no deliverance ministers in Europe, but sometimes you may not know them. Right. So if, you know, if, and if the churches you know, they're not doing it, then you come to someone who really understands it and who really can pray for you. So let me also say this, that many times some of those people that will come to me, they have been prayed for in their church. However, the kind of prayers they were prayed for, again, is the general kind of a thing. So the pastor is preaching, let's say, on the spirit of fear. And he gave an altar call. Hey, if you're here and you have fear, you are bound by fear, come forward. So they come forward and they pray for them about fear. But that is just a deliverance from a specific thing. Right, right. When I'm meeting with you for deliverance, I don't just start praying for you. We're going to talk first. We're literally going to go from before you were born up to this point in your life and begin to pinpoint all the stuff. Maybe you were abused young, physically, sexually. Um, you dabbled into this, dabbled into that. We walk our way from before you were born. Why do I say that? Because some of the issues some of us are going through right now, we inherited it. Yes. So... Your foundation is key. And when I say your foundation, meaning the family you're coming from. So we go beyond. We ask questions about even your family. What are they like? What's going on there? What do you notice? What are the negative things you see? Because if you notice all those things, they're likely in your own life too. Wow. So now, then deliverance prayer, I begin to, so I take note of all those things, then begin to address each thing, command each thing, get out in the name of Jesus. So this, this is deep. Uh, so sometimes when I ask people, when they say, oh yeah, I was prayed for by my pastor, I was prayed for, I say, okay, how long was the prayer? They say, well, they pray for me for like two minutes, they call me out, and they pray for me, I fell out. I said, no, that's not deliverance. <laughs> right, right. That's prayer for whatever they pray for, but that not, that's not deliverance. Deliverance is all encompassing. Deliverance is you want to go into the everything, not just a little two minutes thing. You can't do that in two minutes. Right. Believe me, some of those people have received prayer for five minutes in their church during altar call and they fell out. When I pray for them, one prayer, one issue alone can take 10 minutes of just really praying that, casting that out, and there may be a manifestation too. The demon may say, no, I'm not going. Why? Well, because they went there and they did this, or, you know. And right. So it, it could take an hour, it could take two hours. Right. That's real deliverance. Right. Not just the surface stuff. Wow. Wow. What are some of the legal rights church people give the devil? Well, you know, we live in a culture where the devil has somehow, um, you know, brought the demonic stuff and made, they've made it like nothing. So Harry Potter books, for example, you know, it's like what's, you know, this thing is encouraging spell and casting spells and stuff, but it's so much in the culture that even some of the people watching me right now, they read it. Right. They right. go to the movies and they go watch it too. And because some of these things have been so embedded in the culture, you'll be caught unaware. So you go for a dance. I remember a lady, uh, she's a pastor now, she used to go to uh, an African dance. So she just wanted to learn how to dance, but not knowing that in the process of learning how to dance, she was also getting demonized. Wow. Because this African dance she was learning, the instructor, although they are Americans, but they are actually into African demonic worship. Okay. So the music, the beats, and all that stuff, they even have like an African statue there, you know, and they say certain things Wait, I know you are learning African dance, but whatever you are saying, 
You better know the meaning of what you're saying. Right, right. Because it could be praising God, the real God, or it could be praising some deity. And if you're praising some deity or asking the deity, come into my life, come in. You're inviting the spirit. Right. And they're coming. So that's a legal right right there. Music, movies, you know, charms, a good luck charm. You know, they wear things that they, you know, they wear it because they, they want to do better in life. Good luck leave or something like that. They right. hang it somewhere. Well, those are all legal rights uh, that is being given to the devil. Or the dabbling into the occult, yoga. Um, now, talking about yoga, there is the yes. exercise okay. part of yoga. But what about the meditation part of yoga? Okay. So when a Christian says, oh, I'm going to a yoga class. Okay, question. Is it just exercise alone? If it's just exercise, exercise alone is fine. But in most cases, new age stuff don't just come with that exercise alone. They also ask you to meditate. So a Christian has no business meditating oh you see but the bible says we should meditate right joshua 1 8 but that's meditating on the word of god right a christian meditates on the word of god your mind is involved actively pondering on the scriptures that you're reading now the new age meditation is different they you blank your mind you're in a passive state and when you're in that kind of a state demons are able to come in we're talking about legal rights. Sometimes it is a motivational speaker, a lady or man that's offering some mentoring services, maybe teaching you how to be successful. Sometimes you follow them without really knowing who do they follow. Wow. So what, what, who is empowering them? There's a lady, I will not mention her name because I know this video will go all over the place. <laughs> um, there's a lady on TV that was on Oprah Winfrey show one time and was telling the people to repeat some words. She herself is a Yoruba priestess. She has written many books and stuff like that. She's a Yoruba priestess. And so she's giving advice on relationships and all that kind of stuff. And I can imagine many church people just following this lady. Oh, yeah. And, but this lady herself went to my country, Nigeria, to get initiated to become a Yoruba priestess. Just because they call it priest or priestess doesn't mean it's the Christian kind of priest or priestess. Right, right. So this one is a demonic African thing. But the same lady now come back here in America, and because she's American, so the Americans are following her, and church people are listening to her because she's giving advice. But then in the process, she was evangelizing for, for the devil. Because the thing that she was saying that the people should repeat after her happens to be in my language. So I'm hearing this and I'm like, oh my God, all over America right now, on the Oprah Winfrey show, this woman is telling people, say this, and they are saying it, and they don't even know what they are saying. Wow. Not knowing that they are giving the devil a legal right into their own lives. So people got to be really careful. You see somebody who's teaching nutrition. Right. Maybe they're even teaching weight loss. Okay, you say, oh wow, I want to do some weight, or I want to learn how to eat better. That's all good, but who's the one behind it? Because many times, the people behind this seemingly good thing, they themselves can be demonic, and in the process, you get demonized because what they're getting you into, they may say, okay, use this potion, they may say, say this, recite this, you know, chant, or whatever the case, and so you're looking at, oh, they're teaching me to lose weight, but they're also adding some other stuff that right. is also opening you up. To Satan, yeah. that's giving the devil a legal right into your life. So there's so many things that give the enemy a legal right. Another thing that gives legal rights is something that you didn't even do yourself. It's your own family. Right. Many people's families have already given Satan a legal right. Let me say something about, you know, when Jesus was being crucified and Pilate said, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Right. You know what the Jews said? Yeah, it's okay. Let it be upon us. <laughs> Right. Now, it would have been good if they stopped right there. But they said, let it be upon us and our children. Ooh. They accepted a curse. Wow. Not just for themselves, but for their own children. Some of you watching me right now, you are under a curse that you have nothing to do with. Your own parents accepted it for you. Mm. Wow. Wow. I know the people... 
that are watching this now that's like, Lord, we need deliverance. <laughs> yes. Do you train pastors and leaders to operate in deliverance? And why should pastors, lastly, should be open to this great wealth of knowledge? Um, honestly, I've not done a, a training specifically for pastors on deliverance. I do have what I call spiritual university. Um, I have classes, you know, every now and then I will put it out there and people will come and I will teach on these things. But I, I don't have anyone specific for pastors. However, if enough pastors show interest, then why not? I will definitely do that. Why should they be interested? Well, many of the pastors listening right now, they hear me say things that are like, huh? What are you talking about? Well, you need to, nothing should be a surprise to you. Because if you're going to help your people, they have all kinds of issues. You see, what people don't understand is this. Even though your people come to you for some counseling in, in a particular realm, there's another realm that they're not coming to you for. Let me also say this. Unfortunately, in many of our churches, especially the large churches, in many of our churches, people are going through issues that, because they know you don't know nothing about, guess where they go? They go to the psychic. Yes, that's so true. They go to the root worker. They go to the obia man. They go to the voodoo man. Now, if you're a pastor and you say, what's that? <laughs> you better get with the program because yes. your people are going there. Yes. So they go to those places instead of their pastor because they know their pastor don't understand this depth. Yes. So they need to learn because they will be able to help their own people. And also, if you want your church and your members to fulfill their destiny in life, then you need to learn those things that will help set them free so that they can begin to uh, fulfill their purpose and destinies. Uh, they need to learn because it will even help with the outreach of the church. Imagine people in your community that normally will go to the botanica yes. in your community. But all of a sudden now, because you know how to help them, you put flyers out. Well, they don't need to go and waste their money at the Botanica. Yes. Now, in case you're wondering what Botanica is, those are the religious stores that you see around. They call them religious bookstores, religious Yes, yes. That's where they sell items for witchcraft. So I, I say this to my own folks. I say, if you want to buy any you know, Christian items or whatever, buy books or whatever, go to a Christian bookstore. Don't go to no religious bookstore. Okay. Because those religious bookstores are the Botanica. Uh, they have a bunch of evil spirits there. You know, there are people who go to poultry where they buy chickens and stuff. Yes. They're not just going to buy to eat, but they're going to buy for sacrifices. Yes. I mean, so much to talk about. So, yeah, pastors do need to learn these things because they will be able to help themselves, help their own ministry. And the truth of the matter is that some of the pastors that you're watching right now, their own ministry is under serious attack. Yes. And... But because they don't really know what's going on, they don't know the depth of these things. Yes, they try and pray some prayers, bind some demons, but they don't know the depth. So even how to properly pray, uh, and what I'm saying right now about being, being able to properly pray, it's not just for the pastor, it's really for the body of Christ. Yes. You know what I found out? Um, there was a, a, I can't remember his name right now. He wrote a book about the, the, the powers of the dark kingdom, something to that effect. And one of the things he said, he actually went to Africa, went to Nigeria, went to several places. He wanted to understand more about deliverance and, the, and you know, demonology and all those kind of stuff. So he came up with this, that the Bible addresses all these issues. However, if you've not really paid much attention or studied it, you, you would have read it, but not necessarily know what he's really talking about. Um, just like people go to school for psychology, so if you go to school for psychology, you understand psychology more than the average person. Yes. If you go to school for uh, uh, sociology, you understand those issues more than the average person. So when you study deliverance in the Bible, you understand these things more than the average person. And unfortunately, many people have never really studied this thing. So they're not really able to help people. But imagine if you really be able to understand it or even if you are taught by those who understand it, then you'll be more equipped to help people. But anyway, this man, when he went to Africa and, and just really, and other countries, and begin to really check out what's going on, he realized that, one, the Bible addresses many things, but people kind of gloss over it because they don't understand it. 
you read some things and because you don't know, you have never seen it practically, so you don't even know what the Bible is talking about, but you read it and keep on moving. Right. Uh, but then the second thing is that many people that came out of witchcraft, they came out of occultism, they describe what they did when they were there. Yeah. So that has helped you know, some of us who are in deliverance ministry to understand even the spirit world more. Because <laughs> I remember I, I met a lady here in St. Albans. She um, she's an American lady and she was going through some stuff and her mom said, why don't you go and see this person? So anyway, she went to see a spiritualist. Um, some of you might be watching me, maybe you're Caribbean and sometimes you, you meet people who say they are spiritual. Let me say that it's not everything that's spiritual that's actually of God. Yeah. Yeah. It's not everybody that says they are spiritual that is of God. Um, so you go to this spiritualist which really are people mixed with crap, with the Bible. Okay. You go to somebody and they carry the Bible. They read the Bible. They tell you, read Psalm 91. So you figure, oh, well, they believe in God. Right. They told me to read Psalm 27, Psalm 91, Psalm 35. They must be of God. And I'm here to let you know that, no, that doesn't necessarily mean they're of God. Because those who are even practicing witchcraft, they will give you a potion, they will give you some sacrifices to do, some, some weird things to do, but they also say read Psalm 91. And that's where a lot of church people are caught because they're like, wow, well, you tell me to read the Bible, so I guess it's okay. Yeah. But to go back, so this guy realized that a lot of these people that come out of the occultic world, they describe what they do. So I'm telling you about this lady. So this lady came and she told me, she went to see that person that her mom said to see, but that also got her curious more. And she went online, started reading some stuff. The next thing you know, she started extra projecting. So she would be in her, in her house in the Bronx, and she would leave her body. And whenever she leaves her body like that, the evil spirit would take over. And she said she's always on top of some buildings, but a specific building, church building. Okay. And I said, what are you doing there? She said whenever she's there, she will be making people to fall asleep. She would be making babies cry so as to distract people's attention in the service. You know, and all kinds of stuff like that that they do. I, I met this girl who did that. Wow. It's, it's amazing. You know, again, you know, I get to talk to people and meet people that, you know, average person or average pastor don't get to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Tonight, this has been a wealth of knowledge. Pastor, inbox pastor. Ask your questions. Get the help that you need. Uh, this this has been such a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for uh, taking your time out to discuss some of these uh, issues that we are facing in the body of Christ. Well, you're very much welcome. Let me say that pastors that are watching right now, um, I'm like a specialist. If you go to a doctor and you have certain issues, the doctor will write you a note to go and see a specialist. Yes. That doctor will not try to fix that because they know they're not equipped. They haven't studied that area. They don't understand that area. If you know you're not equipped for this, reach out to someone like me. Yes. I'll be willing to come. You know, I've done meetings where just a one-day meeting, a revival service or three days, whatever you need to do. And I'm saying this, I'm not, I'm not in it for money. Right. So right. you don't have to worry about, oh my God, how much will it cost to get this guy to come? Don't worry about that. That's not what I'm about. The body of Christ needs to be educated, and the people of God that are under our care, they need to be helped. No more just surface stuff. People are tired of hype. At least some people. Yes, yes. Some people are tired, tired of hype. You know, I'll go to churches and I'll see a lot of our African-American churches, uh, since you asked me about that, it's a lot of hype. Yeah. People dance and stuff, you know, and get emotional and everything. But it's only temporary. Because guess what? When they get home, that spirit husband is waiting for them. That same issue is still waiting for them. So let's get out of hype. And now let's get into the real helping of people. Breaking bondages off people's lives and, and helping to set people free from all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Again. 
this is this is the specialist. You know, it's so very true. When you do go to the doctor, and then you have some doctors who try to solve all the issues, you know. They mess you up. And then they mess you up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yes, yeah, so please, 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 if you're watching this video, share it, like it, send it to ministry leaders, um, not just pastors. Um, you know, you have a, a women's ministry, a men's ministry, an outreach ministry, and the people under you, you know need deliverance. If you're watching this and you need deliverance, please reach out to Pastor Finney. Thank you so much uh, for this interview. You're welcome.